Uh, yes, welcome to DEF CON 212. We are DEF CON group uh, stuff, blah, 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 blah. Here's Lambda Calculus talking about uh, the Pirate Box. Mm -hmm. uh, he's trying to revive the project. He's going to tell you more about that. Cool. All right. Hey, everyone. So, as Rex had said, that's my handle. I am Lambda Calculus, and this is all about the Pirate Box. Ahoy, mateys. So, are you going to be standing up or sitting down? Um, I'm going to stand up for now. Okay. I'm high. Because I do a little bit better when I stand up. Right. All good? Yep. All right. So, we get into the nitty gritty about what is the Pirate Box, and it's a bit of a TLDR. So, the Pirate Box originally was a project that could take a single board computer, a router, or any other device similarly. You can use that to share the files over a LAN or WLAN. Mesh networking is also a big part of this. Um, it's not only just for piracy, but it's also for education because you can use it to teach the public about networking, censorship, surveillance, freedom of speech, because the whole purpose is to basically circumvent networks, be off-grid, and be able to share things. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more in a little bit. Um, part of the thing about it, too, is that pirate boxes are private. This is a big, big thing. Pirate boxes are all about privacy, so logs aren't kept. Um, information about, you know, access information from users is not kept, so nobody's going to go in and nobody who runs a pirate box is going to say like, well, this user came in and did blah, 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 and this other user came in and did blah, 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 about the only logs will probably be system logs of what's running, and that's about it. You know, the usual stuff. Um, and the other thing about education, too, is that it also teaches people about how systems are designed and how networking works, which is really great, especially if you've got people who have never really, like, done this sort of thing before. You could teach them about, like, what a mesh network is or how WLAN really works and things like that. This is like really good for teaching people who are like want to get into computers and don't know really where to start. You can tell them like, you know, here's some basic networking, here's what the computer does, here's what the operating system has on it. So it's a lot of good education involved. Um, the other thing too that you can do with these is that you can do communication. So the mesh networking would come in handy for like a chat. You can have like a private forum, you can have like a private maybe like Valid, you know, now that the Valid network is around, you can probably put like a little Valid node in here and people can talk using it. Um, you can have lots of different little communications, like Rocket Chat is another one that people can use. Um, like does I said, it sync with your Zoom. I wish it could. Does it run Doom? Probably does. I mean, it is Linux. But anyway, so I know people are going to be asking, like, how do you build a Pirate Box? So one of the biggest things is that. The basic components are pretty simple because the whole project basically worked around you get your single board computer like your Raspberry Pi or your clone like banana, orange, whatever. You get a portable router, a little travel router will do. Um, other things too is that you get portable storage. So you have to get yourself maybe like a little portable SSD, portable USB stick, load it up with your goodies. Um, the original project was focused on Raspberry Pis, but what I want to do for the revival is see if we can start building a little flexibility. It doesn't have to focus on just the Raspberry Pi. Like you want to use a Banana Pi, you want to use an Orange Pi, you want to use a Raxa. Hell, do you want to buy a Vision 5? Be a little fancy and use a RISC-V based system. Why not? Part of the whole thing too is that it's Turn that around. predominantly Linux that was focused. Ian. That was Ian. So, I saw it. I saw it. So one of the things I want to do is that can we build a pirate box? Maybe say like, what if somebody wants to use OpenBSD or NetBSD? or not just one flavor of Linux because the, pre the predominant one is usually Ubuntu or Raspberry Pi OS. What if you want to do this maybe say under Arch or Gentoo or whatever runs on ARM64? That's part of the whole entire thing that the revival is looking is maybe just build on what's there and expand on it. Um, so yeah, the software side of this is basically there's Linux under the hood, of course, so part of the thing is like, not just Raspberry Pi OS, like I said, but maybe if you want to use straight Debian, or you want to use Arch, or you want to use Gentoo, or you want to use Ubuntu, or Mint, or whatever distro is available for ARM64. I mean, I keep on saying ARM64, but what about ARMHF? Because this is ARMHF, this is ARM64. Um, media service that could be available, you can use things like Jellyfin, you can use NB, you want to use Plex, whatever whatever you want to use. Like the basic idea is that you got a media server that's up and running, launches when the system is launched, 
and basically just like, you know, people can hop into the IP address to whatever port it's running on. There you go, there's your media server, just grab your stuff and watch your stuff and stream your stuff. Um, for books, Calibre is usually the way to go because Calibre has an internal server. Same thing, have it launch on start, point to the port that it's on, and there's your Calibre media library. And uh. yeah. Uh, chat servers, like Rocket Chat is one that I thought of off the top of my head, but I'm sure that there are other ways of doing this. Like I said, Valid might be an option. Um, you probably have hell if you want to be really fancy, do an IRC server right there. Um, for a landing page, like when people come onto this from, like hop onto the Mesh Network on this, um, Hugo is a good idea because Hugo is quick and easy to set up. You can make a very fast landing page, very easy to modify. It's just all markdown pages. and. Yeah, yeah. You put, you put, you know, you write your page for Hugo, push it in, it gets published automatically, people will see it. So you can do like a little landing, it says like, hi, welcome to my pirate box, here's the links to all the ports where everything is on. You'd be like, uh, media server, book server, uh, chat server, whatever is running on there. The idea of this is that this is not a rigid set in stone thing, this is a flexibility thing. So this is just basically like a basic little blueprint of what you can do with one. Um, the reason why I've been looking at this project, I've had, I found the Pirate Box project again. I mean, like I already knew about them, but the project have been dormant um, since like 2019, and there hasn't really seemed to be like any activity on it since then. I mean, like the distro is still available; you can still download it and put it on your Raspberry Pi two or three or four or whatever, and it should run just fine. But it is very outdated, and I'm pretty sure that it needs a lot of TLC to get back up to speed. So the reasons why I wanted to revive this is that we all know in 2023, fascism in this country is on the rise. It's a very real danger. And we don't know where, where they're going to go with it, but we know that censorship is definitely going to be one of the things. And one of the reasons why is because, like, yeah, ban books for children. Like, people are freaking out about books. What if we have, like, e-books for kids and we can just load them up on an, a little USB stick, pop it in the pirate box, Go to a, a school or a library with, for the kids. Tell them how to get onto the pirate box and they can download the books that they want to read. That brings me to the second point. Marginalized communities, not just here in the city, but anywhere. People of color, LGBTQ community, the lower class income. You know, people need access to this. Libraries are in danger. You know, we don't know what's going to happen to all of these websites. You know... A lot of major streaming sites, a big what streaming sites, a big publishing, they can just pull out a book at the drop of a hat or just like that, and then that's it. And I mean, yes, I know I said earlier that this is not about piracy, but in a kind of way it is because by grabbing these books off of sites like LibGenRS or downloading things from Pirate Bay or downloading anything like that and saving it and putting it onto a pirate box, we are in a way helping a lot of these communities out. Like we can grab queer-friendly movies and queer-friendly books and queer-friendly zines and put them on a stick and go to, like, a bar, like, we could go to Duplex or Stonewall or something and just turn it on and tell people, hey, we got this little device. If you want to read any of these zines or books or grab these movies, they're right here. Hop on this address, grab your stuff to your heart's content, share it with your friends. That's part of the whole thing. Um, part of the, that's um, part, point three is part of that. I just cover that. Um, education and ideas is another one. That's point four. We can download tons of educational books, and there's tons of links to stuff. And one of the uh, one of the links that I got inspiration from from this um, banned books, educational books. Um, there's a there's a site that you can download like academic books and scientific books too. And the same thing, put them on a stick. Go to schools, go to universities, go anywhere. Give these to people that need them. Like, somebody could buy a, a Kindle or a Kobo or whatever e-reader, but they won't be able to buy the books because, let's say you buy the book, and then all of a sudden, um, Amazon or whoever decides to say, oh, no, we're, I'm publishing this book, we're going to take it off your device, sorry, screw you. We want to prevent that sort of shit. Um, this is also, in a way, like, if you have, like, large media libraries to begin with, and you just want to share them with your friends, but you don't really have the resources to say, like, do a full-on Plex server or a Jellyfin server or NV server, this is an easy way to just like set up a quick little thing, bring it to like, say here, turn it on, people hop on, there's some media for you to download, there's some stuff that you can share with people, people can give you stuff on a USB stick you can add to the library. So it's a fun little way for us to do like movie sharing, 
you know, book sharing, whatever sharing. I know that sneaker net is always there. Sorry. This is a slightly different sneaker net, I guess you could say, because you're kind of carrying it to somewhere, you're putting it down, you're firing it up, people grab your stuff. I mean, sneaker net has always been the traditional, throw it on a stick, throw it on a hard drive, pass the stick around, give it to people. This is a way to like, just faster for everybody to get in and grab stuff. And it's, it's a fun way. We all come together, we're all having fun. We're sharing things, you know, it's a, it's a good community building service in a way. So um, the links, I'm sorry that they're in, uh, they're in blue, but the Pirate Box project site, I mean, it's piratebox.cc. This is just torrent or what, what is the... Um, piratebox.cc is the original Pirate Box site, so you can read about it. You can grab the original software if you want. It's still being torrented. The torrents are still active. There's also a direct download if you still need to do that. Um, Why you use QR codes? Oh, yeah, we can use QR codes, but I should have thought of, I didn't think about that. But um, the snap that I really needed for this is an article that I read on Substack by a writer called Anarcho Solar Punk. It was Recipes for an Off Grid Internet. Um, their handle is Hydroponic Trash do on Colt. Do you run the PirateBox.cc website? I wish I did. I do not because run it. Because it's got an invalid SSL certificate. Um, you could probably just bypass it and no, go I in can, there. I can, but I shouldn't have to. Yeah, I oh, wish I true. did run it. I want to talk to the original creator of the Pirate Box because I want to really get this project revived. The problem is I don't know how to reach them unless somebody knows how to. So that site is still active right now? The site is still yeah. active, but he says bad as a self cert. Sorry, because I'm, I'm slow. Pirate Box is a BitTorrent client or what the hell? No, are no, we Pirate about? Box is not a BitTorrent client. Pirate Box is you build the SBC. There's a specially created distro of Raspberry Pi OS that you download and you put onto a USB stick. You put it onto your Raspberry Pi and you fire it up and it prepares all of the software for you. It creates the mesh network for you. You do like the last little details, you give it a name and everything else. And then once it's done, you carry it around, you plug it into somewhere and the mesh network fires up and people see it, people hop on and they grab whatever is stored on whatever media storage is on here, like if I plug like this stick into here right now, right? You have like a 32 gig USB flash. That's a 64 in here, but same idea. Plug it in there, there's some media on there. Pirate Box will then serve out, like when people hop onto it, they'll see links where they can start grabbing whatever media is on here and download it. And you're completely anonymous, like you're like, your Tails OS or whatever the hell. Well, whatever you want to do. If you want to even run it on Tails so that it forgets everything, you can do that. The only reason why I said Raspberry Pi OS or Debian is because at least you have the persistence of all the configuration already done for you. You don't have to constantly do it every single time. But you do remain anonymous. It doesn't tie your real name or nothing like that to it. Is there a reason you haven't contacted the original developers? Because I don't know how to reach them, and I know well, I can. I mean, can. they have their contact info on the Pirate Box website. And hindsight, yes. I'm going to go do that. I'm actually going to reach out to them. Wait, so, you haven't messaged them yet? I haven't messaged them yet. Yeah, yeah like they have their contact info right there. I will, I will try to, yeah, I'm going to reach out to them. Because um, yeah, yeah, apparently one of, the, one of the creators apparently works um, as a teacher at NYU. And I wanted to see if I could actually contact them and talk Which to them one? directly. One of them, I don't know who. That's so there's still a lot that I'm doing. Like this is still like very much like early work that I'm doing. Like this is why I want to revive the project, and this is why I want to get people to see like what's going on, and maybe like yeah, reach out to them, talk to them, get a lot of stuff rolling because I would really like to see this project coming up and back, you know, back into action again. Are yeah. one of those set up? Like, could you could you show us? Um, this one is a little bit of a prototype. You can kind of see what's going on, but the mesh network isn't ready yet. I haven't gotten to that point yet. What are some common like clients to get uh, to connect to the mesh network? Um, well, once this has a mesh network, all you have to do is just hop on with your Wi-Fi. Oh, you connect through Wi-Fi? Yeah, you just hop on through Wi-Fi. That's all it is. And it'll probably automatically forward you to a home page or something. Yeah, like once you go in, it'll oh. just give you the landing page, which is why I said that. You can use Hugo, set up a landing page, yeah, okay. and then once you're in, you can see like the links for like your caliber server, your media server, if you have a chat server. And if you want to have a like, mesh network communication, like set this up, like hook it to a low router and do like some mesh networking across you're devices not too. You're going to be able to share files over a low router. Well, no, I mean, you can chat. No, no, no. But you can chat with it. Yeah. 
you know, there's just like the fun little things you can do. If you want to set that as a chat note, just uh, put a mesh tastic dongle on it. And, uh, yeah. Mesh tastic is exactly what you want for chat over. Oh, that's all you want to stop. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said, like, there's a lot of flexibility involved with this, and that's why I want to see, like, people can take a look at the basics and then add to it, do whatever they want to it. If you want the chat, you can have the chat. If you don't want the chat, you don't have to have the chat. There's no, there's no but thou must about the pirate box. I mean, like, aside from just having the basic operating system and at least, like, a few little basic things, the rest is whatever you want to do with it. Have you thought of like solutions to put the the router just right in the box somehow? Like does um, Raspberry Pi have like a little attachment? Uh, you, you could do it via Ethernet. You could, you could do host AP to use yeah. Raspberry Pi as a wireless at this point. No problem. Yeah, because yeah. you can also do a DNS mask and you could get it set up with that too. Yeah, I mean. I mean, if you want to use a travel there's, router, there's that's dozen, that. There, there's dozens way, uh, dozens of ways of doing it just in the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of the simplest ones that I saw is that you can set up with a DNS mask and then you can just have the mesh network right there. Because the Pi does have the capability of doing yeah, a mesh network internally. Host AP. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is host AP? It's a way of using a Linux, any Linux device with support. Assuming the wireless yeah, driver is support master mode, you can use the Linux device as an access point. And sure enough, that's, yeah, you can that's the case of this. Yeah, you can no problem. Yeah. So the, the TX power on the Wi-Fi chip on the Raspberry Pi is really weak, so you'd want to use a USB yeah. double anyway. Yeah, uh, okay. but I would recommend in that case, if you want to do it, I would definitely recommend not really using a zero in that case. I would definitely use maybe like a four. I, I wouldn't even use the well, built-in Wi-Fi. My, my, home, my home DNS server is a Pi 3. There you it's go. very slow. But that's also why I had said, too, if you really want to get better Wi-Fi, get yourself a travel router and hook it up. And basically the whole idea is that like this is something like you could put into like a little carrying box and just walk around with it. Have it turn on for mesh. Like if, even if you're at a protest and you need to distribute like media or materials really quickly, you have it turned on and you can tell people at the protest just like hop onto the AP and grab whatever stuff you need. I'll be walking around with it if it's got decent enough range. Or you stay in one spot, you could like if you if you feel like it's an expendable thing, just like drop it somewhere with the AP you know, with this AP running and just let people like find it and grab it. Not find the physical, I mean, but find yeah. AP and hop on and grab what they need. Oh, are, yes. you, are you a member of that yet? Uh, no, I don't have the money to pay for it. Well, I'm a poor man also. Do you know NYC Mesh? Yes, I know Nice Mesh. We have a great rooftop for that, but someone needs to figure it out, and I'm not. I don't have the time to. I, and I think like that's another thing too that would be like a good expansion as well. It's like you know a mesh network like Nice Mesh would be great. Like if you can do like a pirate box at, at that scale, and everybody in the neighborhood can get to whatever's on there easily. What is, what is nice do you mesh? think anyone? Nice mesh. Um, mesh. They're doing. Basically, a free mesh network around the city. It needs line of sight, but Actually, this is a great yeah, this is a great spot for it. over the internet in New York City. Yeah, and, and the, the good thing and the good thing about Nice Mesh is that yeah, like there's they're really expanding. They're like heavily in Brooklyn right now and yeah, in parts the of Queens. Side is like, it's yeah, like no, almost nothing else in Manhattan. The Lower East Side is like overly. Yeah, that, I mean, like they're they're expanding, of, uh, yeah, they're expanding all the time. All the yeah. Can you, can you go to right. Chinatown? I want to see if there's something. All right, so guys, let's uh, wrap up real fast. Sorry, sorry. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So okay. East Chinatown. All right. So I just want to wrap up, and we'll do a little bit more QA afterwards. All right. Here. Uh, no eyeball. Eyeball. Oh. Let's just real quick. I want to wrap up. What's up? No, no, I just want to wrap real quick. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. All right, so I just want to do real quickly. If you want to find me, um, I, I, I obliterated my Twitter account. I will no longer be there. So I'm on Mastodon, hackers.town slash Lambda Calculus. I'm on Blue Sky, same thing, besides.social. I'm on GitHub, Lambda Calculus 37 on GitHub. And there's my greets, 212, 201, NYC 2600, Philly 2600, because they've been awesome for DEF CON. Mm -hmm. Hackers Town, of course. CDC, the Lonely Hackers Club, Phil Tell, and everybody else, you know what to do, man. Hack the planet. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I had those videos actually uh, that, are, um, mm -hmm. that are working on Raspberry Pi's because when I used to use it, I, I used the uh, travel writers. Yeah. Because it was a pain, but it worked. 
I wanna. I wish it would. I wish this thing that could run off a Wi-Fi SD card. Yeah. Those would probably like put a fancy milli app. Oh man, I, I wish that they had brought those back. The Wi-Fi, the yes. Wi-Fi SD cards were great. And no power usage. Yeah. Power. But, yeah. I mean, this one is pretty good. The only one thing I got to do with it is I want to get OpenWRT onto it, but it's like really complicated. Is that, to is that a TP Link or? What yeah, it's it? a little TP Link travel ladder. I. But I want to get. For you after. Yeah, because I want to get OpenWRT on this, but it's so complicated yeah, you to do, do so. Yeah, put a motor on the USB drive and put it in the USB drive and have it Yeah, it's it's wild. But um, yeah, because the other ones. That's the same one I have. Yeah, the ones I saw were like the Glynet ones, which look really awesome, because they're like same thing. They're really tiny. They're about the size of the Pi's are, and they do up to wireless AX. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For, um, the barrel one is like, wireless AX and it's like about $109. Make sure the Gleenet router you get is one of the ones with power of three. It is. It's PoE. Mm -hmm. I, I double checked. I did all my homework. Edgar, I want the power of three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the telltale yeah, marks. That's mm -hmm. funny. That's all funny. I know is as a Fortunato, there is no fucking way I want any wine tonight. Thank you. <laughs> so I hope everybody enjoyed this little talk and... If you want to do some more pirate box stuff, if anybody's ever... I still ever... don't know what a pirate box is, but... Oh. <laughs> we're we're going to... Yeah. It's like automation I software to set up... I fucking tried. It's automation software to set up the Pi for a file sharing. I, I guess if I want to put it also in a very cool sounding way, it's cyberpunk data running. It's a self-contained uh, server that's only access by Wi-Fi that has no local connection. Mm -hmm. The internet, so you can have a simple area oh, yeah. to yeah. access it. Uh, and there's image boards, uh, shed, one on it. Alright. Are we good? Yeah. yeah. Alright.